Welcome to the Hardware Asylum Podcast Extras. In this episode, we ask the question, can your gaming rig make you money? Find out how. I'm your host, Dennis Garcia. With me today, I have Darren McCain. Dennis, I noticed that you posted some really unusual news this week out in your news feed, and it's particularly interesting because it seems timely, paired up with an interesting news article that I read that was all over the net. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit, and the news post that I'm talking about is one where you said, dun-dun-dun, the day that crypto mining got bigger than gaming, which is crazy. But this particular news post, and we'll link to it in the show notes, of course, talks about a product that I just honestly thought was a like a April Fool's joke. Yeah, it, it, it's configured as an April Fool's joke. But so this card April. is from Asus. Now, of course, Asus tends to make higher-end premium products, and this product is called the Asus Mining P106 6G, and it is, for lack of a better term, a video card that doesn't do video. Uh, yes. <clears throat> this is a, a card... In a way, this is the PhysX processor that you would normally use for gaming in DirectX 12 and 11 and uh, anything running PhysX, but it's dedicated to mining, and it's got uh, it's like double ball bearing fans on super slick Teflon oil, and um, so it is an ASUS yeah. quality card with some pretty exciting technology going on in it. But you said it's for mining, and I just I know I'm not the only one out there that is not an expert on mining, so I'm going to expand on that. We are talking about cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. And it's something that we talked about a while ago, like in 2013. You yes. Know? It's like Bitcoin something something. So I don't want to rehash what exactly is a Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, but maybe just a little bit. And that is to talk about kind of the concept behind cryptocurrency mining and how that works and why it just seems so ridiculous to me. Just like, I know people are making money at this. At least that's what the web tells me. Yeah. But it, I just, I don't get it, man. Is this a get off my lawn moment for me? Is that where we're at with this? Uh, well, I think it's a little bit like that because when we think of money, we think of it as being tied to something like in the U S we were tied to the gold standard for a long time where every, our dollar was based off of the price of gold And you could manipulate the price of gold by saying, hey, we just like dumped three billion pounds of gold into the market and it's going to lower the price and lower the value of the country and whatnot. But um, I think it was like Nixon or something like that took us off of that. And then all of a sudden our dollar started to fluctuate based off of market conditions and how popular our our currency was around the world and how many people were buying dollars. And it it's, you know, you have to be a mathematician of some sort that actually understand this stuff. Sure, and I get it, but I mean, let's bottom line it. The reason that money works in the traditional model is because it has a defined value, Mm -hmm. and to some extent, the stability of having a organization or a guarantee behind it. Now, we've seen some fluctuation in things like the crash of the euro and some of these companies and countries going under causing fluctuation, and Greece is a great example. Mm -hmm. But cryptocurrency avoids all that by creating, uh, you know, magic and value out of thin air, right? Pretty much. Um, You know, as we know about Bitcoin, you have a piece of software that hooks into this Dutch grid around the world. And the more people that you have on this grid, the more accurate the currency is, and you can gauge how popular it is but you solve math problems and you get a coin as a result. Oh, we just talked about this. I hate math, which is maybe why I'm not into Bitcoins. Yeah. But Bitcoin is kind of the granddaddy of all. I mean, even my grandma asks me what Bitcoin is, and I you know, I don't have a really easy answer other than, don't do it, grandma. <laughs> don't do it. But don't do it. I do have to admit, and if you go back to the 2013 podcast, you'll note that I had a little bit of interest in this, and at the time really contemplated buying some physical Bitcoin coins because that at least in my mind associated the ethereal and we'll talk a little bit more about that term in a minute but the ethereal value of a bitcoin was something i could hold in my hand kind of as a souvenir Mm -hmm. and i don't know what the strike price was back in those days for a single bitcoin but it strikes me as i balked it about i don't know eighty dollars and maybe i have to go back and listen yeah but i'm a fool a fool well yeah because it's worth like what eight 
hundred dollars now or something. I think the last time I looked, it was eight hundred, which is a pretty impressive investment since twenty thirteen, mm-hmm. and better than the stock market, which is why this industry is exploding to the point where we're seeing the mining P one hundred six six G. Now, before we go too far, I want to give this product a fair shake by mm-hmm. giving you a little more information about it because. Odds are pretty good that we're never going to see one of these in the lab because no video. Yeah, yeah, no video. So the way that this card works is we take a standard GTX 1060 and you remove everything about it that gives it a secondhand market value. By secondhand market value, that is if you take this card and you try to sell it to someone, does it have a value to them? So if you want a 1060, you're buying the value of a GTX 1060 to the point where you can plug it into a monitor and game on it. This doesn't have that sort of value because it has no video output. Well, I think that you've kind of made me realize something interesting. Now, this card is based on the 1060, right? That's, I think, what mm-hmm. we've determined. Yeah, based so, off of how many CUDA cores it has and memory and stuff like that. So they're clever, kind of like some of these cryptocurrency names. It's a 1060 without value, so it's a 106 6 g Ha, 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 ha. Right? Yeah. Am I getting it? Yeah. So six, with <laughs> six grand coins at the end, right? Six, yeah, six gold, right? Mm-hmm. It's like a uh, like a quest, but uh, you know that that kind of makes me feel like this could get even crazier. I mean, what is Asus's top brand? The the Strix, right? Or the mm-hmm. yeah. the ROG edition? And they had that crazy one. What was it called? The the Platinum uh, Keanu Reeves edition, right? The Matrix. Yes, the Matrix. Dun, dun, dun. I so, forgot about that one. And the Matrix is, you know, that kind of takes us back to virtual cryptocurrency. There's a theme here, Dennis. It's like a conspiracy. It's no wonder that cryptocurrency seems so radical. And I'm not even talking about some of the weird cryptocurrencies out there. I mean, there's a cryptocurrency named after Kanye West, for heaven's sakes. Well, hey, let's, uh, let's go to Wikipedia and pull up a list. How's that? Yeah, let's... Okay, so... So, um, yeah, first one on the list, it started in, tw- uh, what, 2014? A fairly young one. Or Aurora coin. Aurora coin. The AUR it got a symbol. So they're trying to legitimize this like a stock market thing. Now, here's where things get back into sketchy again. Who's the founder? Who created this? Baldur, like Baldur's Gate, Odin's son, like, yeah. <laughs> it's a pseudonym. It's a pseudonym. Part. Yeah, how can you trust a product that isn't real, that was designed by a dude that doesn't even want to tell you who he is? How does this thing get value? It gets value because somebody is using GPUs to mine it, and they, hey, I have all these coins now. I want something for them. Oh, I just want to nail some of these interesting ones because the study of this is a maybe more fun than the product. Mm-hmm. I mentioned the one named after Kanye West, and, and now I'm seeing that it is no longer available because apparently Kanye was not amused because, you know, it's not like vitamin water or something. <laughs> Coin yay. Yeah, it's a, well, we got Deutsche Coin, which is made, uh, it's after a meme. Yeah. You know, that stupid dog on the memes and stuff? Yeah, and to me, I could almost pronounce it dodgy, like no dodgy. And what do we got? Hammer coin? Ethereum. Ethereum. Now, we want to, we'll talk about Ethereum more in a minute because that one really seems to be gaining ground, at least in the news. Mm-hmm. But there are some of these. Look at that one. Ethereum Classic. Litecoin, at least I've heard of. But yes. name coin? Like, we couldn't be bothered to come up with a real name. <laughs> Pot coin that one must come from oregon right at least in this area or, or, or colorado, colorado. <laughs> yes colorado dun, dun, dun. we know what you can trade that one for oh uh, oh, oh there was one down here it uh, started with a t oh there, there it is started in 2014 it's active it's called tit coin tit coin the the symbol is t-i-t obviously oh somebody's got a good sense of humor at least these guys gave us their real name or maybe their porn pseudonym names. Yeah, well, it's two of them here. And it's the first cryptocurrency to be nominated for a major adult industry award. So I'm guessing that you can mine Titcoin by watching Watching copious amounts of Pornhub. (laughs) Pornhub, yeah, that's right. No, but in all seriousness, there are a lot of these out there, and there, there are more all the time. I just watched a video that talked about feather coin which i don't know if that's even a joke because you can't tell anymore and that just leads me right back to in order to make a cryptocurrency real it has to be treated like a currency and the first thing that makes that work is it has to have a traded value and i can tell you all day long that you know asylum coin is worth a thousand dollars and you should buy some today go ahead and you know give them our paypal address but um (laughs) 
in the show notes. Uh, Asylum coin doesn't even exist because no one has bought it, but that's the only reason it doesn't exist. And of course, we're not tracking it. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, in order for these to grow, of course, there's got to be some level of control and security around them. And Bitcoin is the granddaddy of those things. But there are pretty constant, I don't know, problems, bombs, backsider trading that really lead me back to what was the major reason that the government, at least in the United States, had a problem with Bitcoin. But before I go there, and don't let me forget, okay, I want to talk about Bitcoin history because I looked into this and I found out something kind of cool. All right. Lay it on me. The very first, very first Bitcoin transaction, which is most likely the very first cryptocurrency transaction mm-hmm. ever, was a pizza purchase. Was it, the, were we talking like family size or <laughs> like a single topping with <laughs> some cider breadsticks or? I got to tell you, so... I'm not even going to tell you the guy's name because somewhere out there he's probably crying today because of what Bitcoin is worth. Hmm. But one of the early miners, Google it, traded 10,000 Bitcoins back in the day when no one even knew what a Bitcoin was for a pizza delivery. So what, at $800 a Bitcoin, that's like $800,000 worth of pizza. Oh, that'd have to be a hell of a pizza, wouldn't it? Yeah. But 10,000 coins, and you know the pizza delivery guy probably did it because he thought it was funny. Did he keep the big coins? My guess is no, because he'd be out there showing us his license plate on the Ferrari that says pizza bed or some shit. And it <laughs> would be amazing. And there are stories like this all the time. I mean, you go out and start reading the stories, and there's a story about a guy that had 7,000 bitcoins on his hard drive. And, you know, accidentally threw it away. $6.5 million sitting in a landfill somewhere. And, you know, yeah. that that's another part of the reason that I just have trouble getting into Bitcoin. Because, you know, today my currency exists at a bank. Mm-hmm. And if I lose my wallet or my credit card, my money still exists somewhere that I can claim it. Mm-hmm. But this hard drive just shows that your cryptocurrency wallet, I think is the right term, mm-hmm. is a virtual thing. It's not real. And on top of that, you just also consider that it's traded a lot like a modern day stock. Uh-huh. And in the early days of the stock market in the United States, there was a whole lot of, you know, like insider trading and stock manipulation, all because they wanted to manipulate it to the point where they would make right, a profit right. and guarantee themselves to make a profit. Uh-huh. And that kind of goes toward a story that I believe, and this is really what started the whole thing is like uh-huh. you come to me to, the other day and said, Hey, did you hear that the Ethereum is down to 10 cents a coin? I'm like, what's Ethereum? So I have a good buddy who's really excited about cryptocurrency and has been investing in what I would say is about a penny stock level of interest, you know? When one of these starts up, he does what anybody with a little disposable income and a little bit of knowledge is, that Mm -hmm. being dangerous, and throws a little money at each of these things in hopes that it might be the next Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And for a while, it looked like Ethereum might be the golden sample, the one that actually breaks out. And it was gaining value at an alarming rate, enough that it was making mainstream news. And it's only been active since 2015. But we were talking about going from 100 to eight or 900 over a period of not even a year, mm-hmm. which is making those people rich with no sign of stopping. No. And they said uh, in the news post, I was saying it's like a $7 billion investment in the entire Ethereum chain. And if you think about it, it's like people that buy into it that actually you know, are into this sort of thing. The cash has to come somewhere. Yeah, it does. I mean, you can mine the coins all you want. You would be sitting on like a million of these Ethereum coins, but they're not worth anything unless somebody buys them or trades them for a service. Exactly. So now we have people that are spending physical money out of their pocket to buy this virtual money because they want to either invest or they yeah. want to manipulate it or something. And, and that money's got to go somewhere. But first, yeah. what happened? What made Ethereum so huge in the news this week? Dennis, it's not a good thing. Yeah. What happened was Ethereum crashed, and by some extent, it went from its huge inflated price, maybe inflated I think it was like $200 price. or something. Yeah, down to dun, 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 like about 10 cents. About 10 cents or 100 bucks. or It was not a lot. It was not very worth much at all. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure 10 cents was what was reported, and maybe that's not true. And the reason that 10 cents was getting reported is because 
there was a massive automated buy that happened. And of course, because cryptocurrency is sort of the wild west of currency, there's no way to tell who purchased these things. They all have weird pseudonyms. There you go. Dennis is pulling up the record, and it was actually up into, oh, low 300s. And, you know, well, hold on. Let me pull up the, the week. Yeah, and this looks just like a stock market. So, yeah, we were, uh, it looks like about 350, give or take. And it plunged down, oh, okay, massive. Now, that only says 235, which, you know, kind of leads me to the wild, wild west where you don't really know what to believe. Mm -hmm. And we're skating around this because it's such an amazing reveal, the incredible issue with this coin that caused it to crash. It's earth-shaking, like, a you know, a giant earthquake in a foreign city, right? That's what caused it to happen, or a bank went bankrupt, or some, I mean, how does cryptocurrency get rocked? Tell me the story. Um. 4chan? <laughs> yeah, so the story here is that it all start. Uh, well, here, I'll let you read this. There. Ethereum price crashed. What happened? Now, this is from a site that I have to admit I'm not really familiar with, so I'm not going to name check them, but we will give you the link in the notes because we're all about transparency, unlike cryptocurrency. <laughs> but it turns out that somebody posted in 4chan, does it even say who? And uh, even if it does, who knows? There may not even be real. Uh, that a user posted that the founders of Ethereum died in a fatal car crash, meaning that their control over the Ethereum market was gone. It's gone. And at that point, everybody started selling because they didn't have an actual path nope. anymore. No controls, no regulation, right? The Wild West of cryptocurrency in a clear example. So the reality is, is this... Of course, story went viral because Ethereum had become the new darling of cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. So everybody was excited to talk about this crash. And some people got very rich. And we will never know who we are and who they are. But <laughs> the are. <laughs> yeah, it was totally not me. But the reality is, it's not even true. But it changed the stock price by so much that the folks that had built auto buys into the system immediately sold all their crap rebought at a lower value same day most of them and then of course that rebound bounced the stock up to nearly where it was before up into the 300 range again giving these people a hundred dollar a share swing which could have been thousands of stocks the supply of ethereum on the market today as reported by the site is about 92,000 coins so 92,000 times 300 right is the total market for these things mm -hmm. So if you could buy a huge chunk and then immediately profit $100 just because you posted on 4chan, well, you know, you're a better man than me. <laughs> well, and the best part is um, and we can actually draw a couple of parallels here and maybe they're related, maybe they're not. But the day after the fake news broke, the author of it posted a picture with the date saying, hey, I'm still alive, put it on his Twitter and then that's when it went viral to the point, well, hey, this is fake news. People are reading way too much into it, obviously. But the part I wanted to bring up. Oh, holy shit. I mean, sorry. Uh, if you listen to this at home, tell your kids cryptocurrency is not for them unless they have a huge tolerance for risk. I just noticed the market value bounce. So here's what was actually reported. A high of 317 dropped to 216, about 11% change. That's a bounce in market value of approximately four billion. Four billion in imaginary cash. Oh my gosh. It sounds like so much when you think imaginary cash. It really does. But somebody had paid in, a group of people had paid in enough to make it worth that much. So there's actually four billion dollars of actual cash that were put into it. So I want to loop back around because I mentioned this before. The American government, and we're not the only ones, mm -hmm. went after bit currency, and it's not the first time they've done it. But this, because of stuff like this, they did it. But primarily because in the old days, <laughs> yeah, like five years ago, yeah. it seems so old, they discovered that the primary use of cryptocurrency was driving the dark web. Mm -hmm. Things like tour services and all those things you read about that hopefully most of our users are only vaguely familiar with, they go on out there that 
let's face it, you need to spend money. You don't want anybody to track to you. It has to be anonymous because you're doing stuff you're not supposed to. Well, yeah. And, and the government was concerned that not only is this supporting organized crime, but it was also unregulated, leading itself to massive market manipulation. Mm-hmm. Just like this. Yeah, so if you think about it, our uh, our author of Ethereum is from Russia. That's a well-known fact. Yes. And we also have seen stories about these huge, huge Bitcoin mining farms in Russia. And that's, I think, another interesting story. Yeah, it really is. Let, well, let's come back to that. Go yeah. ahead. Go so ahead. anyhow, we have... Um, you know, one story that you can think of here is like, okay, well, what if the author of this actually posted in 4chan, because it's completely anonymous, saying, hey, I died in a car crash, blah, 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 and then watched the stock drop, sold out, and then bought back in. And not only that, get a cut of each transaction. Exactly. And then say, hey, I'm alive, and watch the stock rise back up. No one would ever know. Nobody would know. But I mean, you can put two to two together and make an assumption but the fact that he's in Russia over a cryptocurrency that's an unregulated, there's no way to bring him in and actually take any sort of repercussion from it. Oh, it's totally conspiracy theory, and it could be real. That's the scary part. Or mm-hmm. it could just be a prank gone horribly, horribly wrong. Yep. But it illustrates everything about the risk of cryptocurrency. It is big risk, big reward. And we were talking about this list of cryptocurrencies, and the reality is... Just like currency in the real world, not all of these can be profitable. Not all of them can even survive in the long run, but the market is so new, it's a gamble. Mm -hmm. It's like playing the stock market only without any protection. And if you are spending, well, for instance, let's look at this Russian biggest Bitcoin mining farm. Oh my gosh, this is scary. And this just goes to show what happens if you have more money than brains, maybe, or at least more money than a normal person. Mm -hmm. Uh, Okay, I'm reading through this. This is the largest known Bitcoin farm in the Soviet Union, maybe the largest in the world. And again, not saying this is tied into that crash of Ethereum. I mean, who knows? But this particular unit has how many dedicated, specially built cryptocurrency miners? Roughly 3,000 ultra-fast custom devices. You should Google this. Russia's biggest Bitcoin mining farm, or, you know, check the, the forum for the notes. And these ultra-fast mining devices are basically repurposed risk chips. So while you can get GPUs to go and and mine a cryptocurrency, if you get a specialized chip like a risk chip, it's a lot faster, and you can do it with less power. So this is a pretty extreme example, and I like the fact that I'm looking at the pictures, and there's this giant rack of these dedicated servers, and the rest of this huge building is empty. I mean, that's just crazy to me. This is like something you'd see in a movie. It can't be real, but it is. And the owners are quoting that they make millions of dollars each month on farming, and they are making it off folks like you and I that are speculating with small-dollar purchases. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. You know, let's talk about a little bit more realistic bill because like uh, like dlc in games yeah oh my gosh but <laughs> yeah wouldn't that be funny we're yeah we're cryptocurrency mining for hats and team fortress too but i want to i want to step back a little bit because uh one you can build a pretty extreme machine that is obtainable like uh, still more money than brains in my mind mm-hmm. but we're looking at a a more realistic example we're looking at the largest Ethereum mining rig or the, the YouTube's first biggest, and, and I'm sure there'll be more, but... Yeah, it's, like, it's a clickbait title, but mm-hmm. it's pretty impressive. So a dude named Angry Chicken, which is even more awesome, mm-hmm. maybe he posts on 4chan. Well, you never know. Okay, anyway, Angry Chicken has published a video, and I'm not going to lie, it's it's very homegrown, which makes me feel like it's very authentic, and the machine is awesome. It's an 11 GPU Ethereum mining rig, and Dennis, I so much math tonight. I'm just at a at a loss. Three hundred twenty five. <laughs> is that megahertz a second? That's uh, mega hashes a second. Mega hashes a second. So what the heck is a mega hash? Well, the hash is the the math that it runs to, you know, solve problems to get the coin. So it's kind of like a, you know running a, a benchmark you know, like super pie or something like that. You're actually doing a calculation as fast as possible. Right. And that's measured in how fast it goes. Well, this is 325 mega hashes. So there's a hash, which is a unit of work. Right. Mega hashes is what? A thousand or 10,000 or something like that. A thousand of them. 
Yeah, so, so he calls the machine brain rot. And maybe more important than that is to tell you that this is a machine that's running on an Asus motherboard and it's running 11 GPUs. So there is an awful lot of really custom work built into making this thing run. And it's got proprietary cards to break it out. He has to write and modify custom BIOS, not only on the motherboard, but also on the video cards to get them to run. Mm-hmm. And he's running, I think we counted three, four okay, so, yeah. CPUs or Jeep? No, four power supplies. Yeah, I mean, yeah four 1,500-watt power supplies. He has, I think, three of them. Two huh. of them you can see in the video. Uh, the rack itself is like a wooden rack, and he's got, what's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine video cards across the top, and they're just screwed into this piece of wood. And then you got some riser cards, which are, they're not cards, but they're like uh, ribbons, a uh, single PCIe ribbon that connects the card yeah. to the video, of, to the motherboard. Well, because you don't need all that functionality. And these are 1060 Gamer X cards, if I remember correctly, which is near and dear to my heart because I have a 1070 Gamer X. Mm-hmm. So the machine looks awesome, and I, I'm going to guess that it can probably run Crisis. Well, I would assume, although it's only PCI Express 1, so... Oh, maybe not. The thing that I found impressive is that, okay, you can run um, seven video cards on a standard ATX motherboard because you have seven expansion slots. Right. So how do you get 11? Well, in this case, he has, I guess somebody had made an M.2 slot adapter so that you can take the four lanes of PCI Express off the M.2, run it to a cable to a video card. I have to admit that... All Ethereum mining aside, this is a really impressive build, not just because it's possible, and that's crazy enough, but that someone would figure out how to do this. And the amount of work that goes into it just shows you how much money people think they can get out of it. And this isn't even his only machine. No, this is like the second one. And he has he claims in the video that he's got 16 more 1060s on the way. So hats off to Angry Chicken, who is apparently making a decent living building these machines, because I certainly don't know that I could do that. And especially with something that we just saw such an amazing amount of inflexibility. And he mentions that he's doing some other cryptocurrencies too, which is kind of like stock market value Mm -hmm. and adding your investments so that you're not in one bag. You got to diversify, right? Yeah. The one thing that we haven't mentioned that I wanted to call out because it's... It's popular, right? The motherboard? Yes. He he left the RGB LEDs on. <laughs> That's right. So he's got RGB LEDs on the motherboard all flashing around. And then, of course, the video cards have lights on. He didn't turn off any of those lights, even though yes. it, they're drawing power, right? That's right. The 11 GPU Ethereum mining rig has RGB. RGB, <laughs> RGB LEDs. And, you know, he's got a couple of breakout panels so he can run like four X's into one X's. And that's how he's getting his 11 cards. Right. Right. Overall, it's pretty impressive. Um, The video is, for the lack of another word, crap. Um, But the build itself is really impressive. I mean, um, you don't use CPUs anymore to mine. It's all based off of GPU stuff. And with Ethereum, it's still new enough that you can get away with GPU mining and still make it viable. So. As opposed to some of these dedicated machines. And we did look into some of these, like the Ant Miner machines, for example. Mm-hmm. And if you do a little bit of math and estimate what your power cost would be, it's safe to assume that, well, if the numbers they're reporting are correct, you're going to probably safely get one coin. What do we decide? About every six months? Yeah, every six months. And if you are lucky, more. Yeah, if you're lucky or more. And... Um, I looked into the power because they don't tell you exactly how much power you need or how much amps you need or whatever. Um, the one that the amp miner that does the most hashes, um, I think it has three of those dedicated risk boards in it and it pulls 1300 Watts, which means you have to have a dedicated 20 amp circuit in your house just to run that mining machine. Yeah. And they're not even talking about some of the additional power and cooling that's necessary for these. So it is a significant investment Mm -hmm. that may take some time to pay off. And we talked about the, uh, the curve here. If you get into one of these early, you're ahead of the curve. But if you come in as these things start to get popular, when it becomes a safer investment, Mm -hmm. never a safe investment, but a safer investment, it's a lot harder to make money. But the risk is then shared against many, many more users, giving you a little bit more stability. And of course, you can also then convert your coins out. And let's face it, if you're mining coins and you never divest or divest rather 
that investment into coins, then your investment is nothing but vapor after all. Mm -hmm. So at some point, you got to sell. You got to sell. And if you don't have anyone to buy, then your value goes down. So reality is we're not investors and we're not even crypto miners, although frequently we discuss it. And this Asus Mining P1066G really gets us thinking again about, all right, well, how cheaply and can you dabble in Bitcoin? And the reality is, is unless you choose one of these new emerging markets, you can't anymore. You now have to have really a pretty serious machine to make money, which means that you have to have a pretty serious upfront investment. Mm -hmm. So I think bottom line is if you're looking into cryptocurrency, yeah, it is a tremendous amount of risk. But as they say, without great risk, there's not great reward. I mean, there were people that invested in Microsoft too when we thought Microsoft was going to fail to IBM. Mm -hmm. And some of those folks are millionaires. If you are that guy more power to you. Just remember your friends and send us a 10,000 Bitcoin pizza when you make it big. <laughs> oh, that's good. For more information on the topics discussed in this podcast, please consult our show notes on hardwareasylum.com. Stay up to date on the latest at Hardware Asylum by subscribing to our RSS. Follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook. This has been a Ninja Lane production, copyright 2017. Thanks for listening.